Hi guys, thanks very much for clicking this video. Today we're going to talk about the new Arthrex Nanoscope. I had the opportunity to use it uh, for the first time and we did this in a paediatric knee which is really small, uh, taking advantage of the tiny uh, nanoscope only 2.2 millimeters in comparison to a normal scope of around about nearly 6 millimeters which made the surgery that much easier. So the plan with this video is to flip the camera around in a minute, have a look at the convenience pack, what you get with the camera and all the instrumentation the console itself, then we'll move through onto the case where we do the meniscal repair. If you get a moment to click the subscribe button, that would be great also. Thanks very much. So now we're down here looking at the convenience pack that the nanoscope comes in. This is a sterile single use uh, pack, so simply remove the lid. So there's lots of things in here that you get with a normal scope. Unlike a regular arthroscope, there's less things to uh, see in this box, which is great. It's all integrated into the nanoscope itself. So there's no light cable. The light source is all contained within the, the single-use nanoscope itself. So this cap here is really important. Uh, really don't throw it in the bin. This is to allow calibration of the, the nanoscope, and you may need it further on in the surgery, so don't throw it away. So this is the body of the scope. This contains everything that a regular stack includes. So the image uh, sensor is called a chip on a tip, so it's all within uh, the device itself. The LED light source is also contained within this, so there's no separate light cable. It's just a single connection to the console, which is fantastic. Obviously, this is all sterile, so again, you don't need to put it into a separate uh, sterile uh, bag, just making maneuvering and using the scope uh, much easier. At the top here, you've got two obturators. You've got a blunt one and a sharp one, depending on what you want to do and your preference. Here you've got uh, the cannulas. So essentially it's the same as a regular scope except just much smaller. Uh, this is the fluid inflow here and you can see the diameter of this in comparison uh, to normal is very small. So the diameter of the nanoscope itself is 1.9 millimeters. This is 2.2 millimeters and in comparison to the outer sheath um, of a regular knee arthroscopy uh, set which is around about 6 millimeters or 5.9 to be exact. You get two of these and um, so if you want two different uh, portals and um, you can simply swap between them without having to uh, remove one. These are for the fluid inflow and again you get two because you've got two cannulas and they're just uh, a tap to allow uh, fluid in and out of your scope. Now this can be connected to a gravity bag or this could be connected to a syringe uh, depending on your uh, preference. At the end of the case all of this is disposable, um, so it's single use each time. And we'll take a closer look at the actual nanoscope itself. If you look at the top, there's two buttons. Again, really familiar uh, from a normal um, arthroscope. Um, the top one is for taking pictures, um, and the bottom one is for taking uh, video. The scope um, is a zero degree uh, field of view, which is slightly different from a regular scope and just takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but uh, because it's got such a high viewing angle of 120 degrees, it's uh, not a problem at all. The LED light source is cold inside, so again, not doing any harm uh, to the cartilage. And it's only 55 grams, which is really easy to maneuver and use. The other advantage of the nanoscope, I'm just gonna remove the calibration uh, tip is that because it's a uh, chip on tip design um, there is some flexibility within uh, the scope itself now it's not recommended to to bend it but a little bit of flex won't do any harm um, to the the scope itself or the image or the uh, camera inside and as it's disposable uh, at the end of the case it goes um, in the bin anyway so we're going to move on from the nanoscope we'll have a quick look at the console a quick look at the nano instruments and then we'll move through a case where we use the nanoscope and the fibre stitch to uh, successfully do a meniscal repair uh, and show you how good the image quality is. Here we have the nanoscope console with its 13 inch touch screen, very intuitive uh, user interface. It's got a rechargeable battery if you want to manoeuvre it around theatre, an ethernet connection to upload your images to PAX or the hospital network. USB for bringing your images and video off the device and HDMI which is really great because it means you can connect to a much larger screen in theatre um, and it's also got an integrated microphone to allow you to record directly and annotate um, onto the uh, images and video that you're taking for your arthroscopy. 
So let's take a look at the Nano instruments. These are all single use and really sharp. The first one's the Nano Probe with a nitinol retractable probe to allow you to go through the cannula. Uh, the Nano Grasper, uh, simple grasper but much smaller, which is fantastic. Nano Straight Punch. Same instruments you would have with a regular scope, but just all much smaller. Uh, the nano scissors, again, great for being able to trim uh, menisci and for getting underneath the femoral condyle, the nano upward punch. So let's move on to the uh, meniscal repair. So this you can see we're in the super patellar pouch, just bringing the scope back. See some synovitis. Um, this is on a gravity bag, so um, the fluid pressure is not particularly high, but clearly you can see everything. There's the articular surface of the trochlear groove. And we'll move down into the medial gutter. And you can see just the beginning of the joint line and the posterior edge of the medial femoral condyle. And moving down into the medial uh, compartment of the knee, Looking at the tibial articular surface, which looks pristine, and the edge of the medial meniscus. This is with the knee just dangling at 90 degrees. And we come across to the middle of the joint, and clearly we can see a healthy looking ACL. And coming into view now, we can see the bucket handle tear of the lateral meniscus sitting in front. And now we're establishing our medial uh, portal, there's the needle uh, coming through that we're watching under direct visualisation. And that's despite not having 30 degrees, uh, but that 120 degrees of uh, wide angle making all the difference. We've managed to put our probe through. This is a regular probe rather than the nano probe. And we're just uh, examining the medial meniscus, checking the stability of the posterior horn. No uh, pathology here to see at all. The next move is to try and reduce this displaced uh, meniscus using the probe. There's a small uh, parrot beak of the uh, meniscus, but it's essentially a red on red tear that reduces nicely without any significant plastic deformation. And again, just notice the uh, fantastic view that we've got of everything. We can almost see the entire lateral meniscus. Again, seeing how unstable this is simply with the probe. looking at where we're planning on putting our meniscal sutures but before we do that we need to uh, freshen up the rim and we use the sharp trocar just to trephine uh, the meniscal uh, capsular junction to encourage healing once we repair this uh, meniscus back to uh, where it should be. The metal skid that comes with the uh, fibre stitch just to aid passage of the meniscal suture needle and to avoid damage to the articular surface. That's then removed and you can see the fibre stitch in the end of the needle loaded and ready to go. Set to a depth of approximately 16 millimetres. Care obviously being taken to avoid uh, the direction of the comperineal nerve the needle in through the meniscus and then through uh, the capsule and deploy the fibre stitch in the posterior capsule, pulling the needle back into the joint with the next fibre stitch ready to go. Then insert uh, the needle for a second time through the meniscus, through the capsule, and deploy the second fibre stitch. 
and then pulling the needle back into the joint, you're left with a loop and a long suture repull on the, the loop which snugs down and cinches the very first suture. And you can see that happening now. And just pulling the meniscus and tensioning it back into the um, menisco capsular junction. Then pull the free end of the fibre stitch and just tidy things up and then finally trim that suture. Being such an unstable and large tear, it's going to take more than one fibre stitch to stabilise things definitively. We swap portals with the nanoscope. Now placing the nanoscope through the medial portal, allowing us a more direct uh, access with the next fibre stitch from the lateral uh, portal into the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Again, the skid placed into the knee joint to protect the articular surface. The next fibre stitch uh, needle advanced into the joint. And again, you can see the fibre stitch loaded and ready to go in the needle. We find this time a horizontal type suture, uh, the most appropriate, so through the meniscus, through the capsule. Again, approximately a depth to 16 to 18 millimetres. Deploy the first fibre stitch into the posterior capsule. Retract the needle back into the knee joint with the second fibre stitch ready to go. Then uh, plunge the needle in for the second uh, fibre stitch in a horizontal fashion, again through the meniscus, through the capsule. Deploy that fibre stitch into the uh, posterior capsular rim. Pull on the loop to snug things down and reduce that meniscus back to where it should be. And then pulling the free edge to snug the second loop and finally trim that fibre stitch free end off. This is with the disposable uh, cutter. And we swap the nanoscope back into the lateral portal for, for a normal view. And we're going to just take the opportunity with the probe in a minute to check our fixation and see how stable things are. Pass that behind the meniscus. The middle one third probably still needs another suture, which we do in a minute, but the posterior horn, very stable. That meniscus isn't going anywhere at all. Or we're going to place another one just there with the probe. And this is an image of our final uh, suture in place. And that completes our meniscal repair. And all the kit that we've shown already uh, that we used would subsequently just be disposed of. Thank you.